Hello and welcome to Fireside History. Today I'm going to continue reading from Telepinu's proclamation. Um, so here we go. Uh, and now from this day on in Hattusha, you, the palace servants, the bodyguard, the men of the golden spear, the cupbearers, the table men, the cooks, the heralds, the stable boys, the captain of the thousand. Oh, he's not going to list uh, anyone else. Like maybe the uh, chamber pot guy, the uh, scribes, the uh, uh, the garbage collectors. I mean, why not list uh, even the stable donkey and horse while he's at it? Sorry, couldn't resist the joke. But anyways, let Tanu wa Tahur Tahur Wiley and Tahu Tarushu be a sign for you if anyone does evil hereafter. Whether low-placed or high-placed, have him brought before you as Panku, and devour him with your teeth. Wow. He was not kidding around. Now, for those found guilty of um, internecine killings, uh, he also had this to say. They must not kill him in secret in the manner of Zuruwa, Tahirwaili, and Tarushu. And now, the thing is, uh, Telepinu did this to kind of uh, restore order. And he wanted the rule of law to be the supreme, um, you know, authority. He wanted to build a rule of law so that this would create stability within his kingdom. Because any realm where the rule of law is cast aside, well, historically, it's never gone very well. Um, you look at our modern day societies, the finest of them have been built on the rule of law, uh, especially in liberal democracies. You look at Britain, you look at France after uh, the Napoleonic period, the rule of law. And this is why they've had they've been so stable for the most part uh, up to the modern day. Now, on the other hand, you look at countries which did not have the rule of law, basically all the Marxist ones, they, they always fall apart because there's no rule of law. There, nothing is sacred. You need something sacred historically. Sorry, I don't want to turn this into a lecture, but this is important. Um, and it's also why the Romans later lasted for so long, the rule of law. But then they had problems under the princeps. Uh, the principate or principate period, as some call it, um, the principate up to uh, Nerva did not manage things very well, and I would argue it was Commodus who really started the uh, domination period. The dominant, I think it is dominant. Uh, they always change the name uh, because the minute the king was or the emperor, I should say, was uh, dominus, or dominated the state militarily in a much more overt manner, in, as the successors of Commodus did, it fell into civil war. And it led to the inevitable decline and destruction of Rome. Not in the east, but in the west at least. In the east, things went differently. But that said, the best periods in history have always been ruled by the rule of law. Um, and I think Telepinu understood this, even if he was a little too merciful with uh, his family's murderers. Now, next time we're going to get into a bit more of his reign and into the subsequent period that followed, um, well, the end of his reign. So if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment.